Hello and welcome to Lucas Film Reviews and tonight we shall be looking at Back to the Future released in 1985 and directed by Robert Zemeckis and about teenager Mike McFly who using his Ben's Dot Brown's time machine goes back to 1955 and not only has to go back to 1980, must get back to 1985 where he belongs, he must also get his parents back together. First off, the script of this film is brilliant, it's funny, it's emotional, all the characters are, are memorable in a way. And the cast is great, including, but not limited to, Michael J. Fox, Lee Thompson, Christopher Lloyd, Chris McGlover, and Thomas F. Wilson, who put in some great performances. And the main standout for me is the person who plays Biff, Thomas F. Wilson, who is great at just playing the biggest douchebag in the world. And Martin and Doc's friendship is one of the best in film. The special effects in this movie are really good, and really do stand up to today's standards. I can't forget how awesome the two main songs in the movie are, which is Back in Time and Power Love, both by Hubert and the News. And I genuinely love how they use the songs Earth Angel and Johnny Be Good in the most iconic and best scene in the whole movie. Overall, Back to the Future is one of the best movies in the 1980s. That's been Lucas Film News. See you all next time. Uh, that's all for today. Let's go home. No, no, no. I am never, ever, ever reviewing you. Ever. <laughs> Where the hell am I? Oh, look! A copy of Top Gun. Let's review it. Top Gun is a 1986 film directed by Tony Scott and starring Tom Cruise and is about Pete Maverick, played by Tom Cruise, who joins the Top Gun School, which is the school for best pilots in the Navy, to prove that he is truly the best in the Navy. Firstly, this film has some absolute bangers in the soundtrack. For example, Take My Breath Away, Mighty Wings and Danger Zone. Second of all, the flight scenes in the film are truly the highlight of it and they're really fun and it has some of the most iconic lines of the 1980s. For example, I feel the need for speed and you can be my wingman anytime, just to name one or two. Third of all, the cast is really charming and all of them really great performance. For example, Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer, Kelly McGillis. Hey! <coughs> That's when we do that again. This film's cast is really charming and features some of the some of the great actors with great performances like Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer and Kelly McGillis. If I got your name wrong, I apologise. But who all put in some really good performances that you'll love and they're so memorable in their car, in their performances. Listen. Fuck, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Thirdly, the cast is really good. And has just some and has some really charming performances for the likes of Tom Cruise, Val Kilmer, and Kelly McGillis. If I got your name wrong, my apologies. Which all put in some great memorable performances. My main problem with the film is that it's in, both think it's, it's kind of dated, and also the final mission, the big one that's meant to be the big mission of the film, only comes in the last 20 minutes, which is something the sequel, Top Gun Maverick, fixes because in Top Gun Maverick, the whole film was centered around the mission, the big mission. Overall, Top Gun is one of the best movies of the 1980s. And you should all go see it alongside the sequel. Lucas, you better come with me, quick and fast. Okay, listen. Me, I think? What do you want from me? Listen, Lucas, I am you from another universe. Listen, Lucas, I am you from another universe. Before we tell you the plan, let me introduce you to the Lucas Society of the Multiverse. I am Hat Lucas because I wear a hat outside for security to make sure you're safe. We have out of sync text to speech Lucas and next door in the multiversal teleportation room next door we have Netmaster, defender of the internet who's currently setting up a multiversal travelling device. And finally, one of the smartest human beings in the multiverse. All knowing Lucas. 
Hi, Lucas. We actually have two security guards outside, not just out of sync, takes the speech, Lucas, but also one of the most powerful fighters in the multiverse, green screen, Lucas. The plan is to get you to another universe where you'll be safe and you can power yourself up doing the one thing you're good at, film reviews. So, who are you going to review first? Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Chippendale Rescue Rangers is a Disney Plus movie about the old cartoon characters Chip and Dale from the cartoon Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers decades after their cancellation. One is at cons doing signings and the other one's working for insurance. Well, working for an insurance company. And they must come together to not only heal their friendship but also to solve a mystery. This film is very funny. I laughed out loud many times while watching it. I love how they use different types of animation from anime to 2D to 3D to um, semi-realistic looking ones. Animation that you saw in those like CGI movies like Polar Express, that kind of stuff. This film is very silly. The villain is an old Peter Pan who, if cartoon characters owe him money, then he takes them and sends them to another country to be a bootleg version of their original characters starring bootleg movies. That's funny. There are so many cameos in this movie that I love. They're not, not only from Disney, but from other companies. And my favourite one of all being Ugly Sonic from the original version of the Sonic movie. Who's not only just a cameo, plays a kind of a big part in the movie, which I love. My main downsides on the movie is the human characters are not in very interesting, but they're fun. I like them. They're likeable, but just not very interesting. And also the other rescue rangers are in this movie for about less than five minutes. So yeah, that's not great. Overall, the Chippendale Rescue Rangers is a very fun movie that I think the family will like. Hello? Okay. That's him. Hat Lucas, you and Green Screen Lucas and Out of Sync Texas Speech Lucas will go ahead and fight whoever, whichever Lucas that is, until we have enough time to make sure the multiversal travel device is ready, okay? Go! Do you really think you can stop me? We bet your copy of Worms Forts Under Siege we can beat you. We'll see about that. Ah 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 ah. Oh shoot and ladders. Okay, okay guys. A bunch of losers are dead. Dudes, you need to use this device to travel universes. Here you go. <laughs> this is the Matrix universe. We have to go before that we have to listen to any really weirdy, over obnoxious speeches. Let's go, let's go. Huh, this universe looks quite normal. What can we be doing about it? There's dinosaurs. Look. Huh. Next one. The 2021 film about a bank robber played by Nicolas Cage who must rescue the governor or Samurai Town's granddaughter, otherwise he dies. First off, I really like the set designs that we see, they're all unique and stand out. I like the lighting and obviously the color, use of colours. It's all very it's a very colourful movie. And also I like how Nick Cage and all the other actors sell the weirdest, because they all put in decent like, good performances, honestly. 
However, that's really where the positive end. Positive end. My main problem with the film is that it just feels random, like they're trying to force a meme for no reason. And everybody is always screaming, waxing over the top. The reason why we love these Nicolas Cage movies is because he's usually the only person acting over the top. And so it kind of makes it feel like he's not unique in this film. And also, Phil Collins feels kind of boring at some point. Overall, this is a fine movie, not great, not bad. Uh, where the hell am I? I am the one who's been wanting you. Why? Because you have something I want. What? What? You're mad. Well, in my universe, I quit filmmaking. Because I was a boom maker at first. I quit, and then an alternate version of me came to me and got me to join back. But then I got bored again. Then a certain opportunity came to me to review movies on the internet. I loved doing it, but the audience hated me, so they, get, so they got rid of my segment. And then I found out you existed. And I thought, get rid of you, I can have the segment back because nobody will ever tell the difference between me and you. You're mad. I may be, but I will be the superior Lucas. I'm going to make you talk about the worst movie. Highlander 2. <laughs> Silence. <sighs> hey me, I'm going to review Highlander 2. <sighs> Highlander 2, The Quickening, is a 1991 film and it's a sequel to the 1986 film Highlander. And while Highlander is one of my favourite films of all time, this sequel is an absolute train wreck of fiction. Firstly, they retcon the immortals to being aliens from a planet called Zeiss. Like, why? It completely ruins the mystery of the immortals, which is part of the appeal of them. Second of all, this film tries to be Blade Runner and fails miserably. Sword fights in the film, which the Highlander series is known for, suck. Michael Ironside plays the villain Katana, who is stupid and he's so over the top it's embarrassing. Like, the whole, the whole reason why the film happens is that Conor McCullough's old and he's going to die naturally soon, but Michael Ironside's character says, no, go kill him, because he's a stupid villain. You could have just waited a bit longer and you would have won. This film brings back Ramirez, who dies in the first film, for no reason. And he just dies again in like, in like five minutes after he's in it. After he reappears. It's stupid. This movie is possibly the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It's train wreck. It is an abomination of fiction. It is, it is a crime against cinema. Overall, this film is horrible. Do not see it. Go watch the original. It's much better. But if you want more Highland stuff, go watch the TV show, which is really good, actually. Overall, this movie can go to hell. Ah, Lucas, you're home now. It's been a weird day. Please rest, you deserve it. It has been a weird day. Anyways, time to break characters and get out and break the full fall. Thank you all for watching the Lucas Tate Film Reviews one year anniversary special. It's been an absolute pleasure and honour reviewing movies for you guys. Well, I'll still be doing it, but this is a little thank you video for one year. It's been a bizarre video to say the least. But anyways, thank you for watching and see you all next time.